afternoon. And on behalf of the Ortega family, we welcome you to the celebration of life for Alexander David Ortega. Holy Communion will be served and is open to all who are baptized. We welcome you to the table. There are gluten-free wafers on the tray and also white grape juice in the center and red wine on the sides. Immediately following the service, the family cordially invites all of you to go over to the Center of Compassion and there will be a reception, so please uh, take the time to go over there as well. The Ortega family is so grateful for your presence as we remember Alex today. We're going to start with Rod Hendricks offering a eulogy. When your kid's growing up, you don't think about giving the eulogy at one of your best friend's memorial services, but I was elected, and I'm, I'm proud to do it. Uh, Alex had a lot of friends. Alex David Ortega, he was born August, let me see my notes, 25th, 1951. I know he's a month older than me, so I rib him about that. He'd have been 73 next August. Uh, as I said, he's got a lot of friends, and it could have been a lot of people up here sharing and giving a eulogy, but I'm proud to have been elected for that. Um, usually a eulogy is just on one sheet of paper, sum up somebody's life and the good things about them, and there's too many things to get on Alex to get on one piece of paper, so I'm just going to, I'm going to share some, some stories and some memories that uh, friends and family had, and you can pick out and know all the, the great things about him. Um, he was a best friend. He was uh, loyal and persevering. He was uh, a loving and loyal husband. He was frugal. Got a story about that. He was good-natured. Got a lot of stories about that. He was always thinking of others. He was a loving grandfather, a great musician, and he was a Christian. Um, his uh, family and close friends knew him as Aki, and uh, we always called him that. Um, just a couple of things from his, his uh, siblings. Um, they thought of him as the best brother they could have had. Um, I, I probably mispronounced this, but uh, Odahan, Odahan, his father called him Odahan, which I guess meant big ears. It's a great way to be remembered. And um, his kids remembered him as, as always being there. And um, Derek said he was never mean, except one time he saw him mean with an adult tried to uh, beat up on Derek. Alex was mean at, at that time. Stood up for him. Um, I'm going to share some stories that some, some friends gave me. And I had to edit a lot of, uh, a lot of the language, okay? <clears throat> so you can use your imagination on certain words. Um, Craig Penrod is uh, a good friend that we've, we've known most of our lives, and Craig remembers that his family, his dad was in construction, and they moved around a lot. And finally, uh, in about the fifth or sixth grade, his mom said, that's enough, we're going to settle down, they got a house. He ended up at uh, Webster Elementary School with some of the other guys, um, and he didn't know anybody, and Alex befriended him there. And uh, Craig says Alex became his first best friend. I love that memory. Um, Craig says he was, Craig was really good at spelling. He was usually would win all the spelling bees until, until Alex entered one of them, and Alex beat him. <laughs> and I mentioned that to little Al, and little Al said, yeah, whenever we couldn't spell a word, we'd always say, hey, Granddad, how do you spell that? And he, he always could spell it. So um, Craig also remembers, Craig's a lawyer, by the way, now, so I, I want to put that in, because when you hear some of the things they did as kids, you go like, my God, why are they still alive? <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, Alex Craig and Dave Swears, uh, they took uh, Alex's dad's car. Stole it was the words uh, Craig used. And it was a 1964 tan Chevy Impala. And that car keeps showing up in all these stories. But um, they decided they were going to, to go to Las Vegas. But they didn't, <laughs> they didn't know how to get to Las Vegas. They end up on the freeway going to Flagstaff. And um, they had to, I guess, take the car across some dirt road to clear, get over back on, on the right track to Vegas. But um, those that knew Alex's dad, his dad did not like that one bit, and he called the cops and he reported his car stolen. And, um, and his mom, like a lot of moms, tried to, tried to intervene, you know, uh, uh, enablers, <laughs> don't kill him, don't kill him. And uh, the police came and said, well, you know, we'll find him and we'll, uh, we'll arrest him, we'll put him in jail. And uh, he said, all right, all right, all right, I don't do that. So they ended up not having to go to jail, had some mercy there. Um, Brent Corwin, these are all guys that we were in the band together. That's a big portion of Alex's life was, uh, was uh, music. But um, loyal and persevering and a loving husband, some stories that, <clears throat> that Brent had. Um, he remembers that growing up, and a lot of us remember this, it was a time <clears throat> in our country that uh, we were like at conflict, not war, at conflict in Vietnam. Uh, we had race riots going on. Uh, we had the draft. A lot of friends, or a lot of our friends, were drafted and everything, but we were we were living with that. So they used to take that old '64 Chevrolet and cruise up and down Main Street. That was the big thing in Mesa was it was cruising back in those days. And um, Brent remembers they would do that looking for a kegger. All right, you can young people probably don't know what a kegger is, but beer come come in a keg and they would have parties with a with a kegger well <clears throat> they found a kegger one night and um, they got there and according to Brent Alex saw what he called quote an angel in a short white dress and uh, he started dancing with her and they danced all night and they've been together ever since yeah um, some years later, I left the band, and Brent remembers uh, they played at the library. Again, you youngsters think that's a good place that you go and read books. Well, the library is not. It was a, it was a music dance place. I'll call it that. But um, they played there, and Alex was on drums, and he was crammed back in a little corner, the low, low ceiling, and everything, having to hunch over and, and play like that, and. According to Brent, Alex had had a lot of vitamins, a lot of vitamin pills that day. We'll call them vitamin pills. And he was, uh, he kept playing really fast. He was playing so fast they couldn't get him slowed down. So, yeah. Um, years ago, uh, Alex got crushed in the mine. He was working in the mine. And uh, his, his health, as Brent recalls, was never the same after that. And as Brent put it, uh, he surprised everyone because we didn't think he would he would last almost 73 years. Uh, Bobby Contreras, he was a cop. You guys will know what these kids grow up into for crying out loud. He remembers him as frugal and good-natured and always thinking of others. Um, he remembers playing with Alex either on the same team or against each other since they were eight or nine years old. They only lived about a mile apart. And um, Alex would remind Bobby how he struck him out in a game, and he was always digging him about that. Um, here's this great story I'm going to read to you so I don't get it wrong, because this is amazing. Uh, one time they were at school at Carson Junior High, and uh, Bobby and Alex decided to go to a baseball game at the old Rendezvous Park. Uh, the pros used to play there. And they went, they went to watch the Dodgers and the Cubs play. Uh, they were able to grab a foul ball 
And while walking back to their bicycles, they met two players in street clothes, walking towards them, one tall and the other short and stumpy. They saw the ball, and they asked, if we, asked us if we wanted them to sign that. And they did and walked off. And we looked at the names, Don Drysdale and Sandy Koufax. Yeah. We went to Bobby and Alex went to Bobby's house where they played catch with a ball and they lost it. <laughs> so Bobby has some stories about, I don't know, some things like hot summer nights in Arizona, guys and gals and um, swimming in the hot pumps and, and beer and police. Uh, one time, uh, this, this shows how frugal Alex was. Uh, one time, um, the police stopped them, red lights, and uh, pulled them over, and they had a bag with a six-pack of beer on the floor, and the police had him get out. And this is the way, this is the way Bobby says it. Uh, had them pour out our hard-saved money into the dirt. Yeah. And Alex was so frugal, Alex proceeded to tell the police that this was crazy. It was such a waste. Please, he was saying, take it home and drink it yourself. <laughs> I'll add the rest. They didn't do that. The police let him go. And Alex went around to the trunk and opened it up. And it was a bunch of hot beer in the back and said, come on, guys, let's go anyway. Bobby remembers Alex being the best man at his wedding. He and Maria were the, the first of our group to get married. And uh, he remembers that Alex and Bobby had sideburns back then, guys. We had, oh, little Al's got, got them. Mutton chops, they used to call them, hanging down there. And he said it would, make, would have made Elvis proud. <laughs> Alex made fun of Bobby that he was getting married. That was before he met Denise, obviously. Um, always thinking of others. He was uh, at our 50th class reunion. The band played, and Alex was on drums there. And uh, while he was playing, he yelled out, uh, This song is for Bob. I know it's his favorite. Thinking of Bobby. And, and uh, as Bobby puts it, little Al played a terrific version of Summertime then. Yeah. So it's going to be tough at school functions without him anymore. Uh, this is to quote Bob to you, Alex. He said, I'm glad you were able to come to a couple of lunches with the guys and, and the trip to have uh, lunch with Coach Trimble. We were going to do more since we only lived a mile and a half away. I'm going to miss you, my friend. Say hi to Juan Marichal. When you see him, um, my favorite story is back to the class reunion. And um, Alex never had a solo with a band singing, okay? But he could sing. He always sang. And one day he was, you know, he was singing along to Ho oh, Suzy Q. And I said, man, you do that really good. You need to sing that song. Well, he didn't want to do it, obviously, but I talked him into doing old Susie Q at our class reunion. He had on these pants that, man, they must have been snakeskin or something. I don't know what they were. They were slick. And he kept slipping off the drum stool. <laughs> and the stage, for some reason, the stage was, it was higher than I am here. It was about like that right there. And this, it was that far away from the back wall, just about, just about that far. He slipped off of that stool during Susie Q, and he fell into that gap. And he's laying there like this in the middle of Susie Q. <laughs> and little Al's going, oh, shoot, oh, shoot, oh, shoot. It's on, it's on the recording, Al. He didn't say shoot. And Brent and I, Brent's on bass, I'm on keys. We came over and we pulled him up and got him up. And I said, uh, 
do you want to finish the song? And he said, golly, no. He didn't really say golly either. And after we all got our composure, little Al goes, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is rock and roll. <laughs> the drummer's laying in a gully back there. Denise walked by me and said, uh, Susie Q kicked his butt. <laughs> Al remembers him as a loving grandfather and a great musician. He said he used to take him and his, his brother through the music journey. Um, and the way Al puts it, he said he saved me from wasting my life in an office. <laughs> Al's an amazing musician, you guys. Uh, and he joined, he joined his old grandpa and us old fogies to play at that reunion and made it sound good. You know, he was probably the only good thing about us, really, but thank you, Al. Um, Al says he taught him how to look at music, the good and the bad, because there is good and there is bad music. Not all of it's good. Um, he said he had a perfect perspective on music. Uh, he was critical when he should have been. And Al said he pretty much wouldn't listen to anyone else about music but his grandfather. Uh, I know that Alex liked all kinds of music but rap or hip-hop. Sorry, youngsters, that's not our generation. Our folks didn't like rock and roll, and we didn't like rap and hip-hop, okay? But Al got him to listen to it from a different perspective. He got him to listen to it instrumentally, you know, instead of the words and everything, and kind of, kind of, well, no, listen to, listen to what's being played and everything. So he, he became to appreciate even that as well. So Al, Al helped him out there. Um, Alex sat in with Al's band at the Rogue before it, it was closed down. And uh, so Alex is playing with these young guys. Here's Grandpa with these young guys. And it's a, it's, a, it's a great band, you guys. They're really good. And Alex is back there. And uh, Al looks around while they're playing. And he said it was the happiest he had ever seen his grandfather. <laughs> you can imagine the look on Alex's face getting to play with his grandson and those guys. Um, the rest of the members of Al's band, they had so much respect for Alex that, that they were telling Al they were so glad that they got to play the show with his grandfather. Yeah. Um, when Alex was at home, when he came home from the hospital, um, and I think even in the hospital, the pastor visited and, and uh, gave him communion. He'd taken communion. And... Um, Whenever, after he had his last his stroke and was in the hospital, the uh, first time I, I went to visit him, and um, this is his good nature, guys. Um, I walked in and I said, get your lazy butt up out of that bed, you know, and he kind of smiled like that at me, you know. So the last time I saw him, you know, he's got a, he's a good natured. The last time I saw him was on uh, Sunday afternoon, and uh, I walked in with a, with a regular greeting, but by then, we, we had been informed that he didn't have long, and, and uh, so once again, I greeted him with, get your lazy butt up out of that bed. But that time, I, I fell across his chest and wrapped my arms around him, and I was, I'm face to face with him. And I said, Alex, we're going to get to see Jesus. And he, he again gave me that smile and, and whispered, yes. You know, I could hear him. And I said, you want me to pray with you? He said, yes. You know, so we, so we prayed together there. Um, I looked this up. 2 Corinthians 5.8 says, absent from the body and present with the Lord. Um. I know Jesus, and I know Alex, and I know that where Alex is today.
awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe displayed then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art when through the woods and forest glades I wonder and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur thy power throughout the universe display then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art when when i think that god his son not sparing sent him to die i scarce can take it in that on that cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art when christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then i shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my god how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art We have gathered as friends and loved ones of Alexander David Ortega. His death is a great loss to us. We gather to honor his memory and to express our love. As we gather, we look to our gracious Heavenly Father to bring peace and comfort to each one of us, and we pray that he would help us bring comfort to one another.
When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember today our brother Alex. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, comfort us who mourn. Give us your aid so we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until, by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please recite with me Psalm 23 as printed in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. We hear from Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. This was written at a time when the Israelites were living in captivity by the Babylonian Empire. Their temple had been demolished, and they were away from their homeland and all that they knew and cherished. Isaiah is writing to them, offering them words of hope that God has given him. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The next verse is from Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Denise said that these verses were read at their wedding as well. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Next, we hear from Paul in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8, 35 to 39. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than victorious through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. There are some people that are a part of our lives that make you wonder, if I was in their shoes, how would I live my life? Would I be able to work past the pain, the setbacks, the disappointments, and still move ahead? Would I be able to live a life that wasn't bitter about my circumstances and look past that? To be able to throw the frustration of circumstances into forgiveness so that I could continue to actually have life. Alex Ortega 
Because of an accident, his life was changed forever. And yet he was a walking testimony of what it means to do the best you can with what you have. Actually, he did better than that. He chose life and to live it in a very meaningful way. Alex was a Mesa native, born and raised in the desert. He was the oldest of four children, and he graduated from Westwood High School. While in high school, Denise moved to Mesa and was invited to a new kid's party, and now you get to hear the other side of this story that we heard earlier in the eulogy. She saw him, and well, Denise told me that it was pretty much love at first sight. He drove her home that night from the party because the people she came with ditched her. And, well, dare I use some lyrics from the boss, you can't start a fire without a spark. And a spark took hold, and a fire of love began. She said that their early years of marriage were um, something that she treasures, where Alex played a lot of baseball, other wives would bring their children in strollers, and it was just a beautiful time in their life definitely demonstrating what it means to be born in the USA. Alex was not only a lover of sports, but a lover of music. He played in a band, as we heard earlier, and he would also teach his grandchildren to play the drums as well. Well, every family has one. That is one person who knows music trivia in and out. One person who can tell you what song was a hit in what year and what, in what month. Someone who can tell you who left what band and when. Someone who can name that 60s, 70s, 80s song tune in less than three seconds. And it turns out, Alex was that person. And just in case you hadn't guessed, he was a huge fan of the boss, Bruce, Sting, Bruce Springsteen. And who isn't with such great songs such as Glory Days, My Hometown, Dancing in the Dark, Born in the USA, and so many more all songs that depicted life and love. And the strength of the boss's music was how it was captured in a transcendent power and nature of music. For I believe that Alex understood how music has the ability to touch our soul, connect our hearts, ignite our passions, and reveal our spirit. I believe Alex lived his life this way. He was one who was a connector. Due to his life circumstances, he was the one who stayed at home with the kids while Denise worked. He was wise enough to know how valuable relationships were and was a wonderful husband and father and friend to so many. He was not only a father to his children, but also an excellent baseball coach. He knew how to coach and make kids better baseball players, but more importantly, he knew how to relate to them to make them better people. He knew what mattered in life, and that is how we treat others. He knew that legacy was important as well. I'm not talking about the kind of legacy in which you leave masses of money and huge buildings and things. The best legacy is what one leaves behind in our hearts. The legacy that touches our soul. The legacy that tells us we can do better. The legacy that tells us to care about others. It's the kind of legacy that we leave behind that will leave an imprint on our hearts with the ability and want and desire to share it with others. Peter Strobel, a motivational speaker, once said, Legacy isn't something that you leave for people. Legacy is something that you leave in people. And Alex has left a legacy of permanent imprints upon the hearts of his family and friends it's obvious by all who are gathered here today. As we look to the scripture verses that were picked today, the Apostle Paul shares with us that nothing can separate us from the love of God as he tries to make known that God is in us, God loves us, God's love through Jesus Christ is meant to be shared with all. I believe that ultimately Alex was able to live this. He didn't have to preach it. He understood who the source of love is and he lived it in his life by the way he loved people. Alex also knew that just because, he was, just because we believe and belong to God does not prevent us from knowing suffering. But suffering is a means for teaching, bringing us perspective, and offering an opportunity to reflect on our faith 
not just when things are going well and wonderful, but especially when we are challenged. For it is in our woundedness and vulnerability that we can embrace and face the realities before us that life takes us places and teaches us lessons. And that God's love perseveres and presence is with us in the difficult times and things as well. Alex knew God's love, which had been poured out into him through the promise of his baptism and the life that followed. We light a baptismal candle today in remembrance of his baptism. God made a promise that Alex would be sealed by the promise of the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Because, as Jesus said in the Gospel of John, God is the source of eternal life. God seeks no one to perish. And no one will snatch God's child out of God's hand. This is what we dare to proclaim today. This is what we hold on to for ourselves as we face our own mortality while grieving the loss of Alex. We are grateful for the privilege and the opportunity to be able to gather and celebrate a life well lived. A man whose legacy is one of love for others until the end and one who gave of himself in countless ways. The same Holy Spirit that gave Alex faith filled him with the sense of peace even until the end is present for us now as we walk through this valley of the shadow of death. I encourage us not to rely on our own wisdom or strength, but to feel the loss, shed the tears, tell the stories, and be filled with the gift of gratitude for Alex and for faith that can offer us hope that doesn't rest in ourselves, but in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, whom death could not conquer. Amen. Please turn in your hymnals to number 742. What a friend we have in Jesus. Bye. 
eyes forsake you. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield you. You will find a soulless there. God has made us as people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. It is printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the comfort and peace of your love. Give us courage and faith to those who are filled with sadness, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Grant us grace to entrust Alex to your never-failing love, which sustained him in this life. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and remember him according to the favor you bear for your people. God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks because by his death Jesus destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives we shall live also and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love which is in Christ Jesus our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, as we get ready to partake into this holy meal, this meal of forgiveness, this meal of sacrifice, this table of love, Lord God, we know that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds, and by the things that we have left undone. But through this meal, through this forgiveness, we are able to walk freely because of your forgiveness and your sacrifice. Lord God, as we partake in this meal, might we uh, be renewed in spirit, be ready to share your love and light with the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. pray. And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ may give you strength and bring you peace. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I'm going to ask that the family come forward, please. hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Alexander David Ortega. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in peace, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may turn to your hymns number 779. If we could sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 5, that would be great. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. I was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear. Was grace my fears relieve? How precious did that grace appear? This hour I first believe. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that taught me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise. And when we first begun, You may exit at your leisure, and we invite you to the reception. Just come out these doors, take a left, and then keep going straight. Take another left, and you'll see a big building called the Center of Compassion, and that's where the reception will be.